Well, no. Right after this, on July 4th weekend, we have MDL. That's yep. true. America. And there's s s five Chinese team out of eight. Yep. Who with, else is with there? OG, EG, EG and, and Clutch. Clutch. Okay, it is Clutch. Clutch is there, really? So I'm pretty yeah, I'm sure... OG and EG is going to take number one, but there's five <laughs> Chinese in there. So we'll see if uh, China has well, got what it takes. China, and actually, one thing I want to mention on China as we uh, do the draft right here real quickly, but LGD actually lost their first round matchup to Ehome Keen, mm -hmm. the sister Ehome team. That's yep. that's quite the upset in my opinion. And I was talking to Jack, and he's like, Ehome Keen actually, uh, they beat Ehome oh and God. scrims quite a bit. And while well, you guys called it, the uh, puck was not banned and yep. instantly scooped up. That was the quickest three picks. I mean, the bans came out, and then... Night Stalker instantly pucks Sand King. So it, to me, what this tells me is that you have a couple of heroes that are That's the top of the tier of what you want to see. And what they're banning out instead is they're saying, all right, you're going to get the Night Stalker. You're going to get the Sand King. We'll trade those off. But the Magnus, the Clockwork, these other heroes that define like how you take team fights, we're going to take them away from you. But Puck is supposed to be up on that list. Like it Nando's should. Puck is legendary in C. They like so much respect for him. They always ban it out. And if they don't put it on Nando, Raging Potato could also play a puck. He's very good on the hero as well. So I, I think this is a mistake to give him the puck. I, I don't know if Raging Potato is known as a Magnus player in general, but he did play that Magnus that game two, I want to say it was, in the last yes. series. He played it very impressive. He got the very early blink. It seems like he outplayed his lane quite a bit, and he controlled that game and allowed his team for a victory. So part of me wonders if Clutch is, you know, looking back at the series, of course, they watch it, and they were like, okay, that's that was scary. We did not want to give them that. So as you said, though, they give them the puck, and – just a matter of picking your poison. Yeah, it's actually – so this is very comparable to NA. In the very last game it happened, it was a Night Stalker first pick into a Lena Sand King and then an instant pick into Quap. So it seems yeah. – I don't know. Is this is this going to be the mid lane? These four heroes, do they dual lane middle it's in SCA? Yes. Because it's pretty much – that's how it was. These four heroes were picked, like, exactly the same, and it was that was the mid lane, dual lane last versus game, dual lane. Last game it was, like – Lena Quap, that was yeah. the mid heroes, and then you had a Tusk on one side and a yeah. Sanking on another. So it's Excellent. it's probably the same thing. Um, I wonder if we're gonna see Execration go into that Oracle that they like so much, or if they're gonna just wait because they generally pick Oracle when there's a Dark Seer on the other side, and Dark Seer is already banned out. They've been on two beefy strength heroes on Clutch, and then two offlaners on the other side. Yeah, none of this draft so far has revealed anything big no. from either team. And I think the execration actually having the second pick means they can sort of define the draft the way they want it to go. And Witch Doctor still not really giving anything away. Whatever happened to that Bat Rider Silencer thing? That was yeah. like all rampant in day one. That was the groups in general, really. Is it, yeah, especially day one. And then it's like, oh, yeah, no, that wasn't really. And it's not even that it wasn't really that good. In my, I mean, Bat Rider games were actually doing very well, I thought, so. Yeah, Batteries aren't even touched here, though. Guess just the the in tournament meta slowly ramps up <laughs> and things change. I mean, these other heroes, a Night Stalker, a Puck, they're really good at finding a silencer in the back and then being able to blow them up. And it was tended to be a position five silencer, which is very vulnerable to that type of play. So I, I think that maybe that's the the change that occurred in the meta. Oh. I feel like Fly Solo. I remember him playing some. Uh, hey. oh, there we go. Or they There's go for one it. of the two. <laughs> Not I remember, first pick. I remember uh, Fly Solo, though, playing a little bit of Disruptor throughout the group stages as well. So I wonder if Disruptor could be an option here that uh, maybe is on their list. The other big one was the Rubik. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's pretty good. This I, I, th yeah, I, I like think that. Batrider is a very dangerous pick against Execration. Because first of all, Batrider versus Puck, there's sometimes you blink in and he's just like phase, and you kind of look like an idiot. And then second is... They could still do offlane Sand King and Oracle. And Oracle, we, we've known, like, hmm. counters Legion that rider Commander. pretty hard. I was about okay. to say LC, yeah. Yeah, same, same concept, right? Now you have an actual offlaner here, and then press the attack will rescue whoever. So this Batrider, maybe this is why we don't see Batrider, because there's a lot of counter picks you could have. LC is so good against it, too. Like the yeah. pre And press the attack is just all across the board, in my opinion. It's such a gr great ability, really, and that just happens to be one of the hard counters that it brings to the table, so... And we've had some memorable LC games in across the older regions, of course, uh, in this uh, qualifier so far. That uh, what was it, the NP versus Planet Odd series? Oh yeah, the 600 damage. That do, epic game that was. Do Legion commanders and SCA get a lot of farm? I've, I've been seeing NA. It's mostly it's phase boots, blink, blade mail, maybe a BKB, and then he literally sits like you know where Tinker wards are placed. He just sits there waiting for a pay. He literally just sits in the jungle. I don't know if there's like more movement. 
from Legion's per se. In it's SCA? it's uh, they judge it based on if he's snowballing, then they give him four. Yeah. And if he's not snowballing, then they do the whole sit and treat thing. Yeah. I, I'm actually really worried for Execration now. One of the things I don't like about the Legion commander, uh, outside of you know questionable if he can get farm or not, is that you run into a situation where you don't have a vision giving hero, and yeah. against a Night Stalker. And now having Batrider Silencer, there's no way to save him. Like that Legion press the attack, you're not going to build Greaves on Legion Commander. Like how are you going to deal with this? And I, I'm really concerned that like when this timing hits from Clutch Gamers, where you have the Night Stalker with that vision, it's going to be really rough. <laughs> the Meepo last bat? I didn't yeah, even know Armel yeah. had a Meepo. I've never seen him play on that. Obviously, they're comfortable with playing against one another. You figure so that there has to be that factor. But isn't yeah. isn't Armel playing Lena? Like, are, maybe are they're just a some sort of cheese. They just do not want to take the chance. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with lyrical though. It's it's strange. Execration like they need a carry hero now, right? But what carry hero actually provides you some sort of vision? You want vision? You could Spectre haunt. That's vision. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. No <laughs> Spectre. Oh, I mean, I'm just answering the question. Oh. I'm not saying they will pick Spectre, but <laughs> Spectre haunt does give you vision. It does. I also feel like Meepo would have just in general been a bad pick here. Like th their team already is decent against it, and even like a Bloodseeker yeah, final pick could have been the finish there. For execration, and I think maybe they wanted to pick Meepo, but then it was in ban phase. Is that ever like a? There you go. Is that a Dota psychology shit I put myself on the list? I think he definitely should. Okay. I well, they're actually Slark, Vision here himself. He knows where wards are at if he's moving around, and magically he's not getting regen. So I guess there's one of them. Oh That's also like in. That's a Vision here, right? Yeah, but for Clutch Gamer, yeah, I I really like Clutch Gamer's draft already. I like. I personally like seeing the idea, the Lycan builds where they go. How uh, whatever his passive's called, e, the yeah. WE right there. Yeah, yeah. Feral um, impulse. Feral impulse. That's what yeah. most of them are going now. I think you maybe get one in Wolf if you're scared of getting if ganked. That, yeah. yeah, I think most of the time it's WE now because that W, the Howl is actually so it's strong. good. It, it's it's a global presence from a hero and that didn't usually have the synergy with the Night Stalker. Yep, yep. that too. So, you know, Legion is uh, normally known for his or her ability to pressure the safe lane, right? Just spam that overwhelming odd. But Feral Impulse gives you, like, what, 7 HP regen yeah. once yeah. you max it? So you just kind of sit there and chill, laugh at the LC. So I, I actually think this is a very smart safe lane pick. I like it. All right. Execration. You need vision. You need something that's going to carry. Damage, you need know. <laughs> physical damage. You need a whole lot of stuff. I don't know Man, if, if they go like jug, like they always default back to a jug. I know. I hope they don't go jug here. I love the, I mean, the Sven pick would obviously have been so good. Clutch Gamers was playing for this Lycan pick the whole time. It feels like with the the life stealer Sven ban. Would Bloodseeker actually? That's be what I was wondering game? about. I don't know if it's any good though. Like I, I still don't think that's enough. I agree though that that's something the Bloodseeker that, uh, just doesn't feel. Yeah. Nothing feels like enough. I'll just go through options here now at this point, as far as who's uh Oh, let me mention the Spectre. That's still available. I think Spectre's gonna get ran over. <laughs> I think so they're fast. gonna jug and I think they're gonna lose. <laughs> I, that's probably what they're thinking. They're like, well we need some sort of self sufficient core anywhere Can near they go void? what's left. Safe lane void. It's not, not a ton of damage oh. into it again. But it's like void and LC is just so awkward. Oh true. Is that a good pick? Uh, that's what I'm kinda sitting here like. I think there, I mean, there really wasn't any good picks, right? Like, if you really <laughs> look at it, like, they, they just had to go with the, the best hero they felt on. We, we I have actually won when I stay late. I've been watching Rage of Potato. I know he played Troll Warlord in quite a few games I watched already. Whirling Axes against Lycan, you know, provides that missed chance. There's yeah. that oh. idea, so. So this is the mid-LC. Yeah. Nando is normally their number one oh. player, but he's he's a puck specialist, so they put him on puck. Yeah. Raging normally plays the four, played three last game, now it's playing the one. Like <laughs> it is all over the freaking place for execration. Or are they swapping still? Uh, they they could, could run puck mid and have Nando play it there and James plays the off lane. Yeah, that could work too. I, I think that hmm. they've shown that they're uh, versatile enough, but let's go panel, talk to me you guys. What do you think? Who's gonna take this game number one in the series? Well, for me, I, I, I really like the, the Lycan pick, honestly. I, I love Lycan as a hero, personally, and I do think the synergy of the Night Stalker, that when it's nighttime, man, they better hide at the best that they can, get that vision in any way they can, make sure that vision's up as best as possible, or else it's going to be 
an issue. And uh, But I think Lycan's going to be able to run at people. And especially once it gets this BKB, there's not much they can do about that. So. Yeah, and this Night Stalker can bully all the support. Like, uh, almost every single hero early, right, with the, the Void is 85 mana. He gets, like, four casts of it at level one. He can just run around and bully the Witch Doctor if he really wants. I, I, I'm paying Clutch Gamers. I just think they have a far superior draft. Lumi, talk well, to me. Oh, you know what I think, man. I'm a Clutch fanboy. I think they actually have a very strong draft as well. Um, I feel like they're, the, the uh, Silencer plus the Lycan lane is very resistant to what else they could do in terms of harass. So overall, I think Execration is going to lose a laning stage, which is, has been their bread and butter. And I think Clutch is going to take it. Yep. Right. Well, I'm going to take Clutch Gamers as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys at the end of the game. But for now, it's going to be a movement into the jungle. A five-man smoke. Execration looking to open this one up. Dude, look at where Rappy is. He is fully expecting the smoke to come. Yeah. You don't stand there un unless you, you know something is up. Oh, he will break it now into RR. There's the Night okay. Stalker. He, but he walks up. They both have boots. They're not going to quite get there. Smoke is not going to work, and it looks like we should be able to see a trade-off. The applause, well done. Armel's happy. I mean, both teams smoked anyways to place down their wards. So that smoke was not exactly a, a heavy loss or anything for Execration. It does look like they maybe want to try and go for the aggro road, though, as Nando is going to be playing the puck. Uh, heading towards mid, it looks like, and James will be playing the safe lane Legion. Uh, trying to trade off and see if they can actually somehow get away with stealing a couple more runes, but seeing Fly Solo and Gabby there, James will be taken back into his lane. Somebody blocked for Armel mid. All right, nobody blocks for Armel mid. Witch Doctor on the other side will block here for Nando. Now, there's a lot of hype for Puck's, uh, for Nando's Puck. Made some huge plays, like 1v4s by himself. You don't ever see him play this hero because he's always respect banned. This is one of the first and a few rare times that you do see it, so I'm expecting a lot out of him. You're hyping it up, man. I'm excited. I can't wait. It does look like already uh, Armel does have a ward that's on his cliff by virtue of Execration, and Max is going to come in here and punch him a few times in the faces. Yep. It's not a great way to start it. Numic doing uh, the same thing here. Pretty standard double mid lane kind of thing going on. If you went back in time, as we've done many times throughout this broadcast, and you saw this happening mid, what would you think? <laughs> like, back to the old Dota days. Why are these scrubs taking my experience in mid? <laughs> Actually, that's, uh, I'm kind of joking about it, but the evolution of this dual mid, you see a lot of support hero kind of skirting in and out of the lane, and they pay very close attention to them not being in the experience range, like for example when the range creep dies, if they can help it. Uh oh. What's the kill? How does he die? I guess, uh, yeah, the support was out of position, got casket, and then uh, got ran it by overwhelming odds. Alright, well, good team towards the start of the day. They're gonna be able to catch now onto Valina. The rotation from Fly Solo, Nando nice. able to dodge away, but still in trouble, and he is gonna go down. The legendary Puck ends up getting punished early. And but he got the two. courier, did he? did get the courier. Yeah, there you go. That's something. That's, I mean, it's also minus two, though. <laughs> I mean, he forced a TP. He got, what, almost 700 gold for his team? You can make an argument that it's pretty worth it. Okay, fair enough. Let's see if it ends up paying off fully. James still standing tall down here. Do you like the laning setup that we've seen uh, from oh, Execration? It's a, a little bit of a departure from what we had before. I like it. Uh, well, hindsight's 20-20 with James grabbing a first blood. That makes it super good, but um, it James because he could shove out the lane with his overwhelming odd and then jungle a little bit in the in the camp, so he could econ up pretty hard, and it also makes some of the rotation for Nice Stalker somewhat more difficult. With that said, though, Nice Stalker is there, and they're I think thinking about killing RR. Let's see if they can actually make it happen. They do have uh, RR running away now. James is going to get ran at. Bax gets the slow, though. Don't quite manage to find a body block. And looks like James will just be able to back out. Alumi. It's looking like the puck still struggling a little bit. I mean, is it just the matchup that's going on right here? Or maybe he hasn't been playing it long, uh, most recently? Oh. Hold that thought here. Armel gonna get nuked on a couple of times. Forces a TP. The TP gets canceled, thanking 
Doesn't have the Burrow Strike cooldown to follow things up. I think the Puck's doing fine. Um, Lina is nuking pretty hard, but you gotta keep in mind that the, the, the Courier is dead. So you see Lina, he has to actually go back to base. Uh -oh. Bottom lane, James is dead again. Plus two for the Silencer. Again, not what you want to have happen early on. Get this Silencer involved in a couple of kills. It's why it was such a strong counter and uh, right, it's such a strong combination to pick together with the Batriders. They were able to find kills early with it. Mm -hmm. Courier going to finally be bringing out a nice little satchel for all of the Clutch Gamers team. And James continuing to just be zoned out in this lane here. It has felt like we've moved away from everybody heading in and trying to pressure the mid lane. Um, does this start to change the dynamic of the lanes at all for you? First night time, where are we going to see Bobax go? Um, I, I think it's going to be hard for him to force a kill on the mid lane. He's going to probably keep pressuring the James, maybe follow the support a bit. Something that Grant touched on when he was on the couches. He is the strongest support, especially during nighttime. Uh, might need a TP up top though, as Raging Potato is diving on Rappy. Burrow Strike is available as well. Yeah, there's no. a Burrow ship. Oh, wait! Oh, How? He, no, there's still should, blocked should still get the kill. No. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. Raging Potato able to secure that one. And bottom lane, more action going in, but they can't find a return kill on R -R? the region by virtue of that. Is Solo R -R? kill, perhaps? Yeah, mid lane. He's going to yeah. end up going down as well. There's no way to get there in time. So, again, Execration end up losing themselves their Witch Doctor. Yeah, so a different Nice Doctor player at this stage of the game goes for different items as James gets a solo kill again. How is he doing all of this? Last time... He doesn't even have duel. Yeah, he, he just ran him down. I think that's more so the mistake of Fly Solo. Probably stood too close to the creep wave, got nuked by a big overwhelming odd. And of course, Legion has the phase boot, so he activates that and just runs at the silencer. I think it's more so Fly Solo's mistake. Obviously, I didn't see how it went down, but I'm just guessing that's the case. All right. That definitely seems dubious. And, well, a nice little rotation in now. They're going to smoke up towards the top lane. Legion already in a good position. They're not expecting this with not level six online. And maybe going to see if they can find themselves a kill under Rappi. Maybe this is how they got those solo kills earlier. Yeah, but Rappi's so far away. And he's got the boots, so he should be fine. Meanwhile, smoke on the mid lane. Rotation here from Execration. If they land the Burrow Strike, the Lina likely dead. Here we go. Nando's coming in for it, able to dodge space shift. Still is going to take some damage, and Nando may be in trouble. The Burrow Strike, are they going to be able to get him down? He's able to get the jaunt away. He's got one. He's got magic one. are in trouble. Can they actually? No, they can't kill off this Lina. It doesn't look like maybe he dies to the next Maledict type, but it's not going to be there. And Armel survives somehow. Witch Doctor pays the price. Armel had a big magic wand, and he had uh, infused raindrops, and that was the why he lived through it. So that was very critical. Now they can just use their shrine and head back to lane, happy as a clam. Almost in towards those arcane boots, too. Well, my prediction is that Clutch Gamer had the better lanes, and it seems like that is somewhat coming true. Nando should be very careful. Silence through the trees. Boom back, making it look easy. One more oh. Laguna Blade just to secure the kill. <laughs> I'll talk about that one later. Boom back runs the other direction, trying to save Armel. And the reason that he went for the Laguna there is because the Silence was running out. Had he registered an auto attack, Lina's projectile is very slow. By the time the projectile would have went there, I think he would, the phase would have been back up. So You would have had your wow moment again. That would have been... <laughs> so the the Laguna Blade was like it looks silly trying to get that like last tick of damage, but it was very necessary. Well, they also get another kill on the might get another one. top lane. Raging, trying to turn this. James looks to be able to get out. They are going to pull back in. Raging Potato, a quick couple bits of damage, and no need for Laguna Blade. Armel finds himself another kill. That was the wild moment, huh? Yeah, I should have faked wild it. Learn it from the best. <laughs> <laughs> so top lane, they are stalking this Lycan. RR is here. He looked for the cask, but not quite going to be able to get the angle on it. Now he's going to pop the ulti Maledic there as well. Burrow strike. Is These he gonna bounces, end up dying? though. The bounces, though. Oh, he just pops his how and says, where are you at, man? OK, James is coming in as well, but I Ooh. Ooh. Uh, no, he's close. fine. He's, he's not even close. How is, uh, what a spell. Yeah, honestly. It's pretty ridiculous how good that is. And plus the Feral Impulse heal that we talked about earlier. Up right now at 7 HP regen with only 3 points put in it. Yep. 
I've been comparing it to like a mini mech during nighttime. It, it kind of is. Yeah. Runebex finds uh, the Sand King in the jungle. It is a daytime silence, and now. Okay, Sand King trying to juke through a bunch of spells, but. Doesn't end up happening. It was a valiant effort. You gotta give him that at the very least. Armel, to me, has just been one of these heroes, or one of these players rather, in the mid lane that always ends up getting his by the end of the game, even if he has a bad lane and stages up top. They're gonna go after Fly Solo. Constant aggression. Rappy is here as well. He's gonna try and see if he can make something happen. Move back in the area as well. No mana currently, and with Raging Potato running back in, we'll see if they can actually make this turnaround happen. Lemic has shown up. There's the Burrow Strike, gonna connect the damage coming in, and well, Rappy ends up paying the price as well. Silencer, he's gonna rotate up, but far too late to make any meaningful action happen. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation here, but from the Bat Rider, he he wanted to get the Bat uh, get the LC, and then he switched target to the Witch Doctor. And by the time he went for the LC again, help has arrived and gave away the extra kill that he didn't need to give away. So that's that's unfortunate. But I think you were talking about Armel, how he always gets his, and he is definitely getting his this game. Looks like we're gonna see the very standard Bloodstone build first this game. Somewhat dangerous though, right? Like there's a lot of great ways to lock him down. And since he doesn't have the defensive yules, might get into the same situation that Mushi did last game where you pick up the Bloodstone, they run two ganks at your face, and suddenly you're sitting at six charges. So that's gonna be something that I'm gonna look towards uh, Execration to do. I feel like the uh, timing and ideas of Clutch Gamers though is to make use of the Bloodstone before those big initiation items come out. Armel has been farming quite well. And Sand King still a long ways away from his Blink Dagger. Legion Commander still a long ways away from hers. And maybe the hope is that you get enough of a snowball rolling with Armel that you don't even have time for, Execration don't even have time for them to react to Clutch Gamers. Uh oh, Lina gonna get Casket. Duel is available. Oh and there's God. a Maledic on oh, top. Oh, Global, they did it Ooh. right in time. Oh, that was so clutch. Yo, I'm so used to hearing the Vuvuzela and expecting a duel immediately after, but yeah, <laughs> Vuvuzela? that global is on time. But back to the Blink Dagger timing, normally I would agree with you, but I think the necessity of Blink for Execration isn't as high this game because you have the Puck, right? Okay. Puck just walks in coils, and then your Sanking could just walk in Burrow or walk in uh, and duel. That's fair. But on the, on the flip side, like we just saw, the global could be the, the ultimate trump card in all of this. So it's really a game of chicken. Who gets off their spells first? Yeah. That's going to be the defining factor of this game. And making stuff happen when that global silence is down. So key in this game for the side of Execration. Gabby is moving down here. Just completed the Mask of Madness. Three heroes. Doesn't even look like that is going to be enough to allow Execration to feel comfortable to push this. And they're still thinking about hanging around. Nando does have that veil finished. But it looks like he wants to pick a, a top kill. They do spot the Puck porting in with the ward. Uh, but Rappy perhaps reacting oh, a little bit too late. Now that's going to be Rappy going down. Nice. Manages to die just barely. Yeah. I think. They did They did enough damage. He died in the fountain. Yes, they did enough damage such that when the TP uh, went out, it broke the broke the coil. coil. Bottom lane, James. Maybe going to be in trouble. We got a big bad wolf trying to huff and puff and oh, tear down that legion. Lemix showing up as well. He will have a burrow strike, but might just end up paying the price. They actually managed to find the silence onto him, and so that's going to be a dead legion and most likely also a dead sand king. Boombacks able to sneak his way out of there before he ends up taking the tower shots and die. The trade of towers is most likely going to commence now. They could come and defend this, actually, with TPs in if they wanted to. But with Light Strike Array breaking down those trees, it seems less likely. Yeah, they also lost Coil. So, or they don't, still don't have Coil, so the defense is going to be a little bit too hard. So Clutch Gamer defying expectations in terms of coming in today, whether they're going to win the lane stage. Um, they are doing quite all right, and I think their mid game is going to be quite strong. With Global, with Lycan Shapeshift, and of course the Night Stalker constantly giving them vision, it's going to be very hard for Execration to take these fights even if they get, you know, multiple blink daggers. Uh-oh. Fly solo. Duel ends up connecting. And that should be the death of him. Yep. Beginning of more dual damage for that Legion. Fly solo did have global, but he didn't have a teleport out. So you can't global TP there and just figure that, you know, just die and try to create some space. Yeah, the ward is going to get scouted, I believe, and taken down soon by Execration. And that, of course, is going to lead them in towards 
Oh, but bottom though, I think James yeah. might just get picked here. Yeah, like in, if he wants to, he actually doesn't have ulti. So they need to test Mask of Madness. Well. And there's going to be the Howl turning, trying to fight, trying to bring him down time. It is going to be there. <laughs> that This hero is insane with MOM, <laughs> and uh, we showcased it there. That was a strength hero pointing out at relatively full HP, but it didn't even matter. Here's your potato. Needs to get out of there as well. And they can't take down this mid tier one tower. It's just not happening. So, backs in the area as well. If they do come in and bring a couple more heroes, Nando might end up just getting silenced and taken down. It feels like, again, Clutch Gamers know that Nando is an amazing puck player, and they've had an answer for him pretty consistently throughout this game. And having Night Stalker come in from the inside the trees could be part of that. Yeah, it seems like they're comfortable giving away the, the, the puck if they have uh, the nice Stalker answer. No. Two guys flying out of trees. Nando gets off the face. Three-man Coil. This is a good spot here for Execration. Coil will break on all of the heroes, which Dr. Death were channeling away. Global being used to defensively retreat. Does Lumic have that Blink Dagger? No, still a little bit further away. Lasso on the left side finds Raging Potato. That is going to be the pick. This is so bad. Like, this is the thing, too. It's it's what we were talking about during the draft, is that you need some type of a vision hero to know where that silencer is. And even if you want to come and try and contest it, uh, you know, the puck coil, I think, just to try and cut their losses and make sure not all of them get ran down. Yeah. Um, but it's still just a problem where if, if they can't find silencer, they're going to lose the fight. But to put things in perspective, Clutch Gamer came out trying to initiate on the puck. They, they failed their initiation. Right. They got three-man Dream Corp in between two towers. They still made it out and got a kill. Like, this is the difference of the strength and mobility between these two teams. And to highlight the point that you made earlier, again, the Blink Daggers need to come. I, I thought that, you know, with, with the Coils, that should be enough. But evidently, Coil was not enough enough team fight. It's just global. Like, th yeah, this global is their time it right now. It, if you use Dream Coil and they have Global Silence, it, I don't know, it's tough. Well, now they don't, right? This is going to be a wraparound silencer. Might tank the smoke gang, but they're going up north, actually. Interesting. Uh, now they're going to get into the fight here, and this would be really bad for Clutch Gamers and amazing for Execration. Trying to get into range, they will find the Burrow Strike, and there's going to be the duel. It's on the silencer. Now Armel taking a lot of damage from that Witch Doctor. Looks like he will be able to live through it, though. The Howl coming through. Everybody a little bit more HP. Lemix starting to take some more damage. Will Burrow strike away? And it looks like with that Execration, going to try and escape. But will it actually manage to happen? The Dream Coil to retreat. And off the back of that, I think we're going to see Execration escape. Yep. That's a lot committed, though, for only the Silencer kill. And I guess they get the Tower, too. So that's more than enough. Yeah. And in that exact scenario, they saw both the Silencer and the Lina. But without the Blink Dagger, they could have only gone for the slower moving hero. But still, a, a pretty big victory here for Execration. A smoke gang for a support and a tower kill. And again, they need to get everything that can, they can done once uh, that global is down. Because now it's back up, so Clutch Gamers should be able to run the show. And the Blinks are up now as well. So this is the point where you have an opening to find that silencer and take exactly. him out at the start of the fight yeah. if you can find him uh and during the daytime is probably the best time to make that happen it's still three minutes until we get that although it's only 12 seconds until darkness falls from the night stalker if they want to make that play and i think this uh the blink dagger on the sand king just highlights how behind rap he is if you look over to the bat rider he is still what three four hundred go away from his blink and he's got a 1v1 lane to start the game off, right? He did go drums first, at least. That's true. But still, I think normally by this time, the the Batrider, if he has an OK game, should have it by now. OK. Well, he'll have it in the future. Um, the Legion, it's something that you know, you're going to still be able to press the attack off if Global is down. But that strong initiation that you can get with a Batrider Lasso, Global Silence follow-up, and then a quick Laguna Blade, just take one hero out of the fight. Yeah. So though, I think LC is not really quote-unquote complete as a hero until she gets the Blade Mail, because the, the target you ideally want to be dueling is Gabby on that Lycan, or even Lina with the, you know, just picking her off. but. Not even sure right now if Elsie could blink in, get off a duel, and survive that duel at the point. I mean, even if you duel Lycan, it's it's still going to be tough because, like, Blade Well, that's why I'm saying Blade Mail, right? Helps, helps with that duel. Well, even then, he's got decent armor. Um, 
which could be a bit of an issue as well with the right clicks coming in. But I, I think that there isn't really a better target to go on unless you manage to find the Lena, perhaps. Um, I don't know. Do you think that they can take five on five engagements from Execration? Is it all the if they find the silencer? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, you could duel the silencer too, or even a bat rider. Like just it, as long as somebody disables the silencer to prevent the global from coming out, then great. It looks like it's going to be Clutch Gamer looking for a fight during daytime. Now, Darkness is available in Boombax, and they are not shy to pop it. I like this, too, because it's Gabby showing in lane. He can still have that global presence with the Howl, and maybe you just end up committing two heroes, although they're really spread out, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know what that smoke was then. I think they, they uh, did the smoke, and then as they move out the map, um, it became obvious. And the other team just backed off as a result. Okay. I'm getting some serious uh, Kale up in here. So Kale. It's healthy for you, not healthy for our frames, though. As Lycan may be going to be the target. They yeah, are going to Epi right on top of that one. And, well, that should be the death of him. Yes, Lycan is going to fall. Epi ends up dropping. More dual damage. That's a very confidence gank by Execration. That was right next to a shrine where people could have yeah. popped. Uh, walked in and activated Shrine and could have made things ugly. And that was through Global as well. That was just the word that was placed yeah. down there. They weren't expecting to be able to do it. They thought they could turn it and they were forcing Roche. With Global Silence back up, I don't know if this is necessarily the best way. They jump in, they caught him. Nando Global. in trouble. Light Striker Ray going to come up as well. They are going to be able to find that kill. And for the moment, at least, Global the Silence bash. still available if they want to try and reinitiate into this fight. X Creation have to get out of here. Wow, that was absolutely no hesitation whatsoever. That was sick by, uh, I don't even know how they had vision of him. I guess Firefly just vision. <laughs> well, they saw the orb come out also. I think that was part of it. And then they knew where the orb was coming from. By the way, this ward that made the previous Lycan gank possible, yeah. this is an excellent spot to place your wards because it's rarely checked. Like, you see the Sentry D ward? That is the most common D ward spot to check for stuff like that, so. Players have been kind of inching that observe ward a little bit further up as a result. Definitely. And yeah, the ward mind games are always a fun one. Well, Raging Potato has an invis rune. We'll see if he can find somebody. At the very least, scouting for his team. But it does still feel tough to take that fight into a global silence unless you have complete vision, oh which they no. still will. There's the jump forward. They caught him. The silence are taken out at the start of this one. And now they're caught in the cast. The Dream Coil onto two in a lot of trouble. They didn't quite manage to catch that Lycan, though. So he's going to be able to hit the shrine. Although the Night Stalker and Silencer died, I, I, I still don't think that they can actually take this fight without global. For the past five minutes, we keep saying Global is key. That ward. You gotta find a silencer. If the silencer walks down the river and hands himself on a silver platter for free, that's the opening that Execration needs. Oh, I'm not sure what Fly Soul is doing. This is the second time I believe he was trying to dro drop a ward or something on the low ground. Remember he was trying to ward here as well and he got picked off? You you have to give the wards to, to the Night Stalker, right? Yeah. Like he's the more, by, in, in fact now he does. The Night Stalker has the wards. He's the, by far the more mobile hero. He has the better vision. He's got to fly escape. through trees. I mean, come on. <laughs> fly solo to me is the much more important hero right now. And just, just sit in the well or something or, or sit really far back. They will lose every fight if Silencer gets picked off yes. first. That's for sure. That being said, he's got the double bracer build. He's building towards the Atos. Let me tell you that double bracer here. did not help when he got to a LC no. and got wrecked. Uh, Troll has a Blink Dagger. That one's pretty cool. I like that pickup. It's all about, like, the chase now. You can feel that, like, frenetic energy that's going to be coming out from Execration. You have all of these high-momentum pickups, uh, four Blink Daggers across the way, and it's all about being able to just run at Clutch Gamers, find somebody off to the side, and then take them down. Yeah, the Blink Daggers are actually very good at pressuring Lena. The way that Lena is built currently, she is very lacking in armor. Look at her right now, she's farm, but has five base armor. Yeah. And as a result, if you blink on top of her with LC or Tro, she dies in a second and flat. Um, defensive Shadow Blade is gonna be used here by the Lina, but still, that 
often will not be enough to, if there's any sort of detection. That was a canceled TP by Legion Commander. Are we going to see a base race? Realizing that they're going to actually go for this. A DD on Troll. They need to come back for Gabby this Gabby doesn't right have now. a TP right now. Gabby does not have a TP. He has to run to the side shop. That tier 3 could be dead here. Blink, Lasso. Do they have the global? Immediately yields up here. They're going to try to blow him up. But keep in mind, he's got the Aegis. Gabby now walking to the side shop. Will pick up the TP, but perhaps a little bit too late now. Global again? No. Press the attack. will bring him away. Rappi's still looking for that opening. The Dream Coil turnaround, but into the global immediately. They need to back out as long as this is going on. Lemix trying to get away. Sandstorm Burrow Strike, but he is going to pay for it. Nonetheless, I think you get out with a lot of these other heroes. Silence. Dual Scepter needs to come out now. All right, Nando, can he play himself out of here? There's the Blink Away, the Phase Shift, the Orb, the Big Bad Wolf still chasing Nando. Not going to get ran down. It looks like RR is who they turn to instead, but they, they're not even going to get him. They don't have vision, apparently. Ironically, as a Night Stalker cannot chase down the Witch Stalker. All right, my heart skipped three big beats here as the LC blinked on top of the Lina. Yeah. And then the Global came out. Fly solo. Whether that's pre-mediated or whether he had godlike reflexes, I'm going to assume the latter. But his global timing has been impeccable. They found themselves a troll, though. Okay. Armel, quick shadow blade in, finds the kill. And I, I, I like, um, you know, you talk about it as well. You talked about that. Oh, the needs to get out now, Armel, please. Uh, they spot him. Oh, jump forward. <gasps> they got the duel. They're going to be able to catch Witch Doctor Ulti as well. If Lena goes down right here, ah, oh, this one is really going to hurt. Denies at the very least. Yep. But you talked about it. This is the problem with the Lina build is that she does start to become vulnerable to these types of ganks. Yes. Um, she was able to get off a nice little snowball going for herself and probably now going into the Lincoln Sphere. If she can get this quickly, I don't think she's going to be punished for it heavily by Execration. Well, not by the LC, right? But yeah. a Blink Tro Bash is still a thing. Yeah. She has no... Uh, oh, Nando is going to get found here. Armel right back in the fight. Easy kill here. Uh, they're popping the ulti as well. Epicenter came in, but he's silenced. And BKB on Gabby, he is so big, so bad. And RR going to get two shot. Double kill for Gabby. Simultaneously, Raging Potato was able to blink to the back line and kills off the silencer. That is the, another thing that he can do with that blink dagger. But will he be able to make it out here? Blinking forward, they're slowing him down. Armel oh, again big. at the right place at the right time. They used to press the attack, but it wasn't enough. And right now, Clutch Gamer is showing off the full mobility of their lineup despite not nearly having enough Blink Daggers compared to Execration. And this is big. You take down the tower, you take down four. Battle Rider has himself a four staff, and the net worth graph is going to severely swing into Clutch Gamer's favor. This is what we always knew could happen with this draft. The ability to take team fights well, and they didn't even need the global in that instance. Had they, did they have the global? I'm not sure if it uh, was up during the fight. I wasn't really looking. Not sure. Yeah. But I mean, he did get taken out, like you said. But still, it's emblematic of the fact that their team fight right now is so much stronger than Execrations. And I think the big thing, too, is uh, all right, fine, you take down Armel, but he's back so quickly with that Bloodstone that it kind of sure. doesn't matter. I think a large part of it is actually just who gets the jump, right? Yeah. Because when Execration gets the jump, when you could get rid of the global, and then continue to proceed to pick more. I think Execration is quite strong as well. It's just that in the last couple of fights, it's Clutch Gamer that keeps getting off the lasso onto Nando. It's Nando, almost like they need a vision hero on Execration. <laughs> oh, we did talk about it. Um, Nando is itemizing for it. He is going to get the Lincoln Sphere, so that should give him that half second of extra time to get off his phase uh, and get out of there. And they've been playing well around it. By and large, you have a BKB that's going to be coming out for LC. Uh, does have 50 dual damage, which is nothing to sneeze at. Also, the Puck building now into, I believe, what was the... Uh, he had a recipe queued up. I thought it was Boots of Travel, but it looks like he is just going straight in for the ultimate or first for the Lincolns. Yeah, Lincolns is very key. Uh, I, I, I think uh, Execration will lose every single fight if the Batrider successfully lassos Nando. Now, this is where it really becomes a problem and execration you look at their vision they've got these couple of wards here which are scouting out little things but eventually that's going to become less and less important and look at this ward that was placed during when they were uh, pushing the high ground I didn't see a whole lot during nighttime. <laughs> 
Oh, more more of darkness time. Yeah. Sure. This is like the super night. But uh, so five to ten minutes ago, we keep saying you know silencer is the key, and now we're gonna see a smoke. Game. The BKBs are coming out, and this silencer's impact will quickly fall off once that both troll, as well as the LC has theirs. Uh oh. RR, a quick kill. I mean, I guess the, the problem, though, is that you do need to... I mean, if you are forced to pop your BKB right like that and responding, then maybe Clutch Gamers can kite away the duration of your BKB also. Um, something to consider, but regardless, it is definitely one of those answers and a way for uh, Clutch Gamers to lose a little bit of efficacy. Well, I, I, the global silence is what it's really preventing the duel from yeah. coming out from Armel. And if you could BKB through that, get the duel off on Armel, then, you know, then that's where Clutch Gamer really have a lot of issue. Totally. Speaking of Armel, he is playing rather well. You talked about him having a good laning stage. Uh, he did get picked once or twice, even after the Bloodstone being picked up. But now he has the, uh, the Lincoln Sphere finish, and he's building back into more armor in the form of a Shiva's Guard. I think this is all of the correct item choices coming out. Yeah. As the game goes on, of course, we've seen just how much damage that Lina can do. Right now, it's a lot of magical damage, and we've talked about how there is the BKBs coming, which is going to mitigate a lot of that. But you are going to start getting into the right-click damage of Armel. Um, I mean, even Shiva does a decent little boost in the damage. It's really the talent that's the problem. Yep. She's 21. Going to get to the 25 uh, pretty soon. Currently 4,000 net worth ahead of the Troll Warlord. The uh, tune of about a 6,000 net worth lead, around 11,000 experience. So next couple of minutes, fighting around Roshan, how do you see this going for both teams? Are Execration in a state where they have to be too scared of the Night Stalker vision, or do you think they're okay still going in and trying to come and contest Roshan? It depends if Clutch Gamer could find that one or two wards that currently Execration has. If they can and, and de ward it, then I think Clutch Gamer should just rule the area, right? You have you have Firefly, you have Night Stalker, Darkness. They they in theory should be able to claim Roshan through the vision advantage, but as we've seen in the past, if Flysol like walks down the ramp and gets picked, you know, then anything else could happen as well, so Armel right. spamming out creep waves, bots back up top. This is a very much pickoff oriented lineup in a lot of ways for Execration with like Legion, but they have that team fight prowess as well. Which Doctor standing next to Armel. In this stage of the game, it's about who makes the mistake. Yeah. Who is the better team? Are still trying to get into that Glimmer Cape. It does look like finally a smoke movement as Roshan could be respawning. And we now see on Clutch Gamers as well as Execration that Rosh is up. The scan, a little bit off the mark there. Not going to find anybody from the Radiant. I wonder if they saw Nando's Lincoln Sphere. That's a big part of this next team fight. If they just jump on him and he gets to block the lasso, then uh, it's going to sneak Roshan. I'm not even sure if it's a sneak because they can do it just so fast. They have Solar Crest. Gabby just goes in. Yeah, I think they know it. They, they, can, they have vision in this area and they're seeing what's happening. So... It goes a little bit too quickly, and Clutch Gamer is now with an Aegis in hand on Gabby. It is going to be very hard to take down this wolf. Unless everybody DCs on Clutch Gamers, and then it'll be very <laughs> easy. <laughs> so I do find it somewhat interesting that they put the Aegis on Lycan and the Cheese on Lina. I feel like almost the opposite would have been better. Yeah, that's definitely something that's a concern. Because Lina has such a like low cooldown on her spells, she she could use her spell, die, and then come right back. Whereas, you know, with with BKB on on the Lycan, with Shapeshift on the Lycan, it gets a little bit awkward when you do die. Maybe the idea here is that Lina can Bloodstone Suicide to heal back up the Lycan also, and then she yeah, can maybe. bots back in. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a real strategy, sure, right? I, I suppose. Like that, I think that's the idea: is that Gabby doesn't die in the next fight. And this is more like a precaution just in case it does happen. Right. Um, they can maybe get him out. But here's the thing. For Execration, their priority list of heroes that they do want to kill. I think Lycan is on the very bottom in terms of like whether they can actually think about killing him. Yeah. Whereas Lina is extremely killable. Uh, again, her, her base armor is a thing. 
Troll Warlord, I wonder if he's going to itemize for the ability to blink up and bash. He's got the blink BKB and the Yasha, so I think given the possibility, uh, I think sec uh, Raging Potato is, is going to be trying his best to do that. Go on top of the Lina and get her killed. Yeah. And I think that that just speaks to how Armel has to position in this fight, that he can't really show himself. Well, he well. kind of has to, right? He's also somewhat of the tower seizure in some of these times. Unless Gabby's the one doing it. Or well, maybe that's why. You give him Gabby yeah. Aegis so he just let him solo siege. Yeah. Uh, over here to the side, it is Nando trying to push out the lanes. He has a TP available if this does turn into a high ground siege, but could be close towards the end. They're going to be pushing out top now, Clutch Gamers. See if they can take down that tier 2 tower. The last one remaining on the map right now for Execration. Yeah. Nando now building towards an Aghanim Scepter on Puck. An item that you don't see too often, but the idea behind this is you want to control the Lycan even through his BKB, keep him locked down in that Dream Coral area, and if he does break out of it, it is a... Like, I want to say a like long a stun. 4.5, 5 second stun. It's like a long, long Let stun. See. Yeah, 4.5 seconds. Yeah, it hurts. It's, it's a long time. <laughs> the other thing is that it lasts for 8 seconds, so... Uh, you're kind of chilling no matter what's yeah, going BKB on. BKB or not, you're sitting in there. Of course, if Lycan pops BKB and then runs in, um, you can't ca uh, cast the Dream Coil onto him then. Yeah. But the idea is to get the jump first. Just to make sure, like, even if you have the BKB on, the the break stun will still stun through the BKB. Right. That is, uh, that's why Puck has answers to BKB heroes. Speaking of Puck, does have the gem on him right now. And still a long ways away from that Aghanim, so it might not end up really mattering that much anyways. Bax, looks like he's finally... Uh, oh, wait, that was the Puck still. I thought he was going to be going back for the Aghanim Scepter finally, but this is the, the uh, alternative build as you go just the utility Night Stalker. And since you've got Hunter in the Night, uh, you've still got good amounts of vision uh, throughout the... Nighttime, anyways. Yeah, there's a there's an argument of like not buying Aghanim Scepter on Night Stalker, and the logic behind that is Aghanim Scepter is a 4.2k item that doesn't necessarily help you do much more damage when the fight actually breaks out. It helps you select the the better fights, but when the fights do actually happen, you're much weaker as a hero, like comparing to let's say a solo crest on you. So that's why some Night Stalker. Uh, if, if they think that the fights will be very close, they opt for better fighting items. I mean, there's a thing to be said about the fact that, like, even if you have all complete total vision, if you still can't actually exactly win the fight, fight. Yeah. it doesn't end up mattering. Oh. Clutch Gamers not really feeling too interested in making full use of the Aegis yet. Still another two minutes left before that one is going to be reclaimed. I think this push might be it. Yeah. If uh, split push is not coming. Do you think that Clutch Gamers are under pressure to end the game? Is this a lineup that has the ability to scale well into the late game? Uh, or is there a timing where Execration starts to take back control? If you say late game, like 45, 50 minutes, then I think Clutch Gamer will be stronger at that point. But Execration has some like ridiculous level 25 ability, like the Puck 420, the, the LC, like infinite dual damage kind of build. So, I think Clutch Gamers should want to end the game before we get into those ridiculous 80 minute mark kind of situation. This might just be that one time indeed as they're hitting away at this tier 3 tower. Just takes just so damage. much damage. And like any pop the match of madness, this jump in is already going to be there. Rage of Potato, BKB, but he's immediately going to be pulled back in a way. Global Silence comes out. He is gone in an instant. And Yule Scepter coming out from the buck. Whoa. He wants to go forward on the RR, though. Two shots. It's just too much damage. Lee Mick gets the Burrow Strike, the Epi Center. There's a lot of damage, but it's not nearly enough. They've got all the region in the world. And the Dream Coil only holding them back for a minute. Can they go for more is the question. Two people dead, no buyback. And even if there was a buyback on the Troll Warlord, he activated his BKB, so he's, he's going to be somewhat useless for a long, long time. That global right on point prevented any other counter initiation that Execration could have done. There we go. Blink Burrow Strike to start things off. Duel on the Lina. Look at the HP drop, but not it enough. Was a duel. Oh, God. And then going to eat the cheese. They're all back. They're all full HP. Clutch gamers. I think that they might have just won this game. They, they waited for their timing. They hit it right. Beautiful play. Oh, God. 
guess everybody underestimated how much damage that Lycan could have done. He just ran up the cliff and be like, okay, I own this game now. Pops his ulti yet again. They pull back another. Puck, no way out of that one. Clutch gamers, they were not afraid of the Nando Puck. They had the answer the entire time. And with Megas on the line, it looks like Clutch Gamers are one game away wow. from punching their ticket to Seattle. What a victory. And just like you said, every other C team respect bans the puck. And they're like, dude, what puck? We'll just uh, pick our bat rider, make you look silly as we gank you every single time. And it, that looked easy. Yeah, that looked, uh, that looked quite, well, I mean, that was the thing, too, is it just like it never felt like it was out of their control completely. Clutch Gamers just sort of ran at them at the end and uh, hit a Batrider lasso silencer. Are we going to see that band out next time? Um, I think if the same draft happens again, yeah. I think Clutch Gamer needs to pick the bat first phase. They can't yeah. wait till the second phase because second phase is definitely going to get banned out. All right. Well, that's going to do it for game number one, deciding match of who's going to go on, Execration or Mineski. Lyrical, Lumi, two casters for this one. We'll be back in a few with game number two. See you guys then.